What's up, YouTube? So if you just watched my video on Bitwig's array module in the grid, I know what you're probably thinking. Can it record audio? The answer is yes and no. So yes, it can record values, which you can clock at a very fast rate. So it can kind of record audio and play it back. However, it's not very clean. The array module doesn't have stuff like interpolation, oversampling, and these types of things which uh, we've kind of know. That being said is you can use it for sort of creative uses, you know, as like a glitchy effect or something like that to uh, reduce a buffer rate. You know, you can use it to kind of uh, bit crash sounds and all sorts of interesting things. So let's look at some interesting uses for the array module in today's video. Let's dive in and have a look. Okay, so today we're in the effects grid, which is like Bitwig's kind of effects modular system that allows you to create anything to kind of affect an incoming signal. So here I've got a preset for my Audio Modern Play Beat 3 pack, Grooves, Grids and Glitches. So this is the preset Leaf Cutter. It's basically an entire backtrack and we're gonna apply some effects to this in the grid. First things first, let's put in an oscilloscope so we can actually see what's happening with the signal and what happens when we adjust things with the array module. So do you see all those little intricacies in the waveform? So with the array module, we won't be able to capture all of those little intricacies. However, that being said is we could use it in kind of creative ways, you know, to perhaps bit crush or uh, reverse slash bit crush or all sorts of weird buffery uh, glitchy effects. Uh, we can do that kind of thing. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna create a mixer so that we can mix between the affected signal and the dry signal. So we could use a blend. Let's pop this over here and then let's send this over here. So now we have a dry wet 50-50. Okay, so let's set up the array module like I explained in the previous video. We're going to need a counter and this is gonna send to the read and the write phase. And then we need the transport module. That's gonna go to the one and that's gonna count the inputs here. So let's set this uh, number to something quite high because obviously we wanna clock this rate of this sampler really, really high. So let's just go 64. I guess that's the highest that we can do with the counter. And then let's just make sure that this is at 64 as well. And then let's put in the transport playing. Let's set this so that it re-triggers. Okay, so if we set up the clock coming from the transport, the highest you can clock the transport is one over 32, right? And if we set this to 64 and 64, Check how in the oscilloscope it kind of approximates that shape, which I guess is pretty cool. You know, you could use this to approximate modulation from samples, which I think is a pretty cool technique. You know, you could use this to modulate stuff. Um, that being said, let's replace this for with a clock. So what the clock allows us to do is to clock it at a much higher rate. So for example, let's go all the way up to like 32 Hertz. And you'll see now that it's kind of, uh, the, the values are a lot closer. It's, it's still not quite there. So let's look at using something else as a clock. Let's use an oscillator. So here we can actually use, uh, is there a square? Pulse, pulse is a square. And let's pop this here and you can actually tune this to audio rate. So let's say for example, uh, instead of the clock over here, we can actually just drag the pulse on top of the clock and it should replace it. No, it hasn't. So we can set this outputs to here and here. So you see, because it's now an oscillator, which oscillates at audio rate, it clocks at that exact audio rate that we needed to. You see that? So let's just turn this key track off so that it's a stable rate every time. And you can actually tune it up with this parameter over here. And you see, you get closer and closer to actual audio rate. You can tune it up even more here with this one, and even more here with this one. Okay, I think that's too high. Okay, so you see this? We're almost there, you know, and we're almost at the point where it looks like it's a very close value to the input. And we can actually check this with the blend parameter over here. So 
So how cool is that? So now we're actually listening to the array sound. So let's mix back and forth and see. Okay, that sounds pretty transparent. We can actually remove this attenuate input. We don't need this anymore. Let's do a little bit of housekeeping over here. So let's look at creating a reverse. I wonder how this will work with audio rate. Uh, okay, so, so we need a way of actually turning the record buffer on and off. So let's use that chance system. Pop that over here. And then this we can modulate with a button for now. Okay, so now we've kind of created the system. Now we can create a couple of parameters that can mess with the system in various ways. Let's check out some of these phase modules and how these would interact with, you know, instead of like reversing it, we could use a sync. It's a system, hopefully the sync will kind of like increase the speed, the clock speed. Let's check this out. Okay, we're getting somewhere interesting. So let's create a system which this retrigger can not only be done like at the beginning of the bar, but maybe at cycles. So let's put in a transport here instead. And then this one we could say, for example, set it to like three over 16. <laughs> Okay, what if we created some sort of grain delay system which takes the input and feeds it back through this kind of glitchy uh, array that we've created. So let's use a long delay. Uh, let's set this like this. And then what we wanna do is we wanna set the output to send into the chain. Uh, let's actually put this this way around. Output of this to send into the chain and then this to send in there. Okay, so now let's create a feedback system. So let's create a sum. This output needs to be attenuated here and then summed with the input that is sending into the long delay.
Oh, damn. That is crazy. So, yeah, that's about all that we have time for for today. I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, exploration into the glitchiness of the array module in Grid. Let me know what you think in the comments. As always, if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that like button. I'm going to be uploading uh, this uh, preset to my Patreon for all my $5 supporters. So if you want to know what that's all about, the link is in the description. And yes, I will see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in. Cheers.